Hello everybody, I'm Spark249, welcome to episode 1 of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Made by Naughty Dog. So here we go, let's jump straight into a brand new game. And of course I'm going to be 100%ing this game. And this is leading directly off the last game. So we've knocked Cortex off his limp. Rather painful landing by the sounds of it. <laughs> Crystals. Of course. So, this is the uh, new main collectible of this game. In the last game, you had to collect. Well, you didn't have that to collect. Cortex to reach full power, we need not only your master crystal, but also the remaining 25. Slave crystals from the surface. How do you expect to retrieve them when we don't have any earthbound operatives left? You fool! Do you think I'm unaware of the situation? If we don't have any friends left on the surface, then we need to find an enemy. And this is Coco Bandicoot, Crash's sister. Crash? 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 My battery is fried. Make yourself useful, big brother, and bring an extra battery for me. What, double A battery, or...? Okay. So, if you remember all the crate types, this is the one which you want to bounce on to get Wumper. This is just a standard crate. And this is just a little introductory level. This crate gives you Aku Aku, the protective mask. If you see Aku Aku as he is currently, he'll save me from one hit. If you see him... When he's got more of a golden palace going on, he'll actually protect me from two hits. And if I manage to pick up a third mask, he will grant me temporarily invulnerability. But yes, uh, in this game, we're actually going to need to collect the 25 slave crystals. I don't know why I'm bothering with these. Oh, what's this? Well, well, well. If it isn't Crash Bandicoot, welcome. I apologize for the crude means used to bring you here, but I rather expect a written invitation would have been would have been turned been turned and turned down. I need your help. Surrounding you are a series of five doors. Through each door lies a well-hidden crystal. The crystals look like this. Bring me the crystals, Crash. That is all I will say for now. We will speak again. Okay, bad guy from the last game. So, uh, in the first game we had a map screen to walk to. In this one we're given the warp rooms, and these pretty much get used from every Crash game onwards. You can see up there next to the name of the level, Turtle Woods, that there are three slots. One, there's always one for a crystal, and there's always one for a gem. Although, some of them will contain other gems, and there are 25 crystals in the game, 37 clear gems, and five coloured gems, whereas, and there are no keys like there were in the first game. The crystals are the main objective, the gems are a secondary objective. And in fact, I'm also going to need to pick up something called the secrets, and I'll be getting to those when I get to them. So let's start with level one, Turtle Woods. First level of the first warp room. Oh, and I should probably mention, although Crash can jump and spin, he has a new move now, the slide. And he'll do a high jump if I slide and then jump. And I'm not particularly fussed about Wampa. So... Actually, I think, I'm, I, think I remember something. I'm just going to quickly die. Now, dying is going to hopefully reset. Good. As you can see, there are no boxes smashed. Now, to get a gem normally, I'll need to smash every crate in a level. Whoops. Oh yeah, and I can body slam as well. Uh, by jumping and pushing circle. But that's quite slow and there'll only be certain spots where I'll actually bother using it. Now, the game likes to be a bit... funny about how it hides things. I'm ignoring every crate along the path. Because in this level specifically... Uh, jump on the turtles with spikes around them, by the way. Don't try spinning or sliding them. You actually get granted a gem if you can beat the entire level without ever breaking a box. 
And although it reset all my crates when I died just then, it will not actually reset the gem if I die. Now this looks a little bit tricky to get through, but this crate, as it takes multiple bounces, just do that. If you can break all these pits, you'll get a springy mushroom. Sorry, break all these things in the pits, you'll get a springy mushroom. Now the only trouble here is because I'm... I can't, um smash any crates, I can't get Aku Aku to protect me. So if I get hit, I'll be doing this again. Aha, the first crystal. I'll grab it on the second run through. And these strange mechanical rats I'm killing to make a springy mushroom appear. Okay, so yes, um, other than that, the game plays remarkably the same. Oh, and look, this is actually a coloured gem, so I'm Five minutes in and I've already picked up, well not even five minutes, and I've already picked up a coloured gem. So now I'm going to die. It'll allow me to keep the coloured gem, but this is just to save me exiting the level and re-entering, or... Yeah. Because now I'm going to pick up the crystal and the other gem. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's usually ten to break those. Oh, and uh... Bonus rounds also got changed up a bit. If you remember in the first game, there were three. There were Torna bonus rounds, which allowed you to save the game. Um, there were Brio bonus rounds, which I believe were just to get you extra life. By the way, body slam on that face. Uh, and there were Cortex bonus rounds to get the keys. In this game, there are bonus rounds, and some of them are weird ones like... Uh, this isn't technically a bonus round, this is just like a hidden area. And uh, this is also a new thing that got introduced in the game. These weren't in Crash uh, 1. These are the Nitro crates, Nitroglycerin. And they are dangerous. And there we go. Because uh, you do actually need to smash the Nitro crates. But there's... Oops. Oh, and that's another thing. Dying does not mean you need to restart the level. They got rid of that stupid, frustrating mechanic. Come on. Okay, I'll break it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, Nitro... Right, the TNT crates, the red ones, will... Uh, have a three second countdown before they explode and kill you. Nitro crates aren't so nice and will detonate upon contact. Oh, there we go, so a high jump. How do I make you stand up again? Okay, there is a way to, I'm positive of it. But let's just die because that's quicker. So I'm going to be doing this level quite a lot, it seems. And this is just the first level. Come on, Crash. There we go. Right, that was actually the glitch high jump, which is spin jumps. Uh, sorry, it's slide jump spin. It gets you a little bit of extra height. And although it's probably not intended to cross that, because, you know, it is actually a glitch. I'm using it anyway. Okay, this strange green crate is the nitro detonator. If I attack this, break this. That massive screen shaking kaboom was destroying all of the nitro crates in the level. 36 is more crates than I've smashed. Let's go, back in the st main stage. So that little hidden area, the only reason I actually went into it was to smash those extra crates and therefore hopefully let me get the gem. Now this is actually a bonus round. If you see a question mark, you're heading into a bonus round. 
And bonus rounds, uh, they're going to be easier than those hidden areas. They're just here to grant you tons of lives. And look, there were five crates, an extra life, a bunch of Wumper, and like, three pitfalls that can actually kill me. There we go, and now let's get an Aku Aku to stop me from dying quite so often. And like I keep saying, this is just level one. There we go, I broke that uh, crate high up in the air. It's possible to clear that with a glitched high jump and uh, zigzagging, both of which are speedrunning techniques. I'm no good at them, so I'm not going to bother that hard. Okay, the first of the 25 crystals. Now, they'll all be required to get... Basically, for every five crystals you get, you can take on an extra boss and therefore make it to the next warp room. The gems are here to unlock the better ending. And seeing as I smashed every crate, there's a clear gem. And this is the end portal. So, we're out of Turtle Woods, and whenever we exit the level, if we got anything new, Crash will gladly throw it into the air for us. And there's the first coloured gem. See how happy Crash is. Okay, now let's go on to... oh, Cortex wants to speak. Well done, Crash. I knew I could rely on you. Now listen carefully. These holograms are hard to maintain. During the course of my intellectual pursuits, I have stumbled across a force that threatens to destroy the world. Crystals are the only means of containing it. The fate of the world is at stake. It is imperative, therefore, that you bring them to me. Too much static, Coco. Can't hear a word. Let's go to Snowgo. Now, you can see up there, there's a crystal, there's a clear gem, and there's a red gem. So the second of the coloured gems. And there's only five in this game, mind you. It's TNT. Oh, try and keep these things on screen, because if you run off too quickly, they might not detonate. That's not what I want. There we are. Come on! This ice is ridiculous. There we go. Uh, another sliding high jump. Do that. Crash has literally no traction. Oh dear, I got hit. A little bit of nitro dodging. Failure at nitro dodging, that is. Get on the platform to get up to the next area. A lot of slamming platforms. You can use the slide as an attack, by the way. There's the red gem. Now it is possible to clear that number to get that right now in a number of ways, but in the interest of fairness, I'm not going to. I'm actually going to get it a legitimate way, which I can't do right now. Why did I do that? Okay. Back into the bonus round, and this time wait. There we go. Ten crates. Oh, and the crates in the bonus rounds do count. Getting a lot of lives. I'm going to need them at this rate. An Aku Aku. And down we go. Here's the Nitro Detonator. Don't forget it, or else the Nitro crates won't have been destroyed, and therefore won't count. That was satisfying. The second crystal. Two crystals down, 
an amazing 23 to go. Okay, now these will actually be activated by a... Come on. Well, these would be activated by a switch crate, but I can't remember where the said switch crate is, so... Oh dear. <laughs> I'm missing those two crates activated by the switch crate. I'm coming back here, I cannot be bothered right now. I'll need to come back here regardless for that red gem. So, one crystal, that's all we've got so far, and Cortex wants to speak again. Oh no! Oh! You were helping Cortex gather crystals, yet you have acquired a gem! Interesting! <laughs> well, Crash! <laughs> no, this! As long as you are allied with Cortex! You are my sworn enemy, and I will do anything in my power to, to, to stop you! <laughs> fate of the world is truly your concern. You must g g g gather the gems, not the crystals. If you obtain all 42 gems, I can use them to focus a laser, <laughs> a laser beam that will destroy Cortex and the space station he's created. Until then, I must use my forces to stop you from gathering crystals. Okay, so Embryo has apparently had a little bit of an argument with Cortex, and, uh, well, now they're not friends. And although he said don't collect the crystals, we're still collecting the crystals. Because without collecting the crystals, we won't actually be able to access every level. I fell for that. Hook, line, and sinker. I fell for that! Stupid robofish. That was close. Good, Aku Aku. Whoa! Stupid plot. Okay, now that is a timer! You can push the attack button to do this dash. And, uh, well, this is a timer gem. Which is achieved by me getting to the end of the level in this time limit. Ignore that giant blue gem for now. Hey, look, a crystal. This time limit is tight. Oh, for... Flaming sake, I died. Wonderful. And now the time is gone. So now I'll take things at a more leisurely pace. But yes, there's two levels in the game which will just suddenly throw a timer at you. And say, here, beat the level before this runs out. If you're good, you'll be able to do it. I apparently cannot. I should have bounced on him. Oh well. Why don't I just waste every life I have on this level? Okay, let's kill said plant and beat this level. 74 crates, and I only got 14 of them. But I'm revisiting most of the levels later anyway to obtain the gems once I have all of the coloured gems. Because the coloured gem, you may have noticed the gigantic blue coloured gem. And I already have the blue gem. That's a gem platform. That's what the coloured gems are used for. They'll take me to a secret area. Three crystals? Not bad. I see you are getting the hang of it. I need to conserve power. I will communicate with you again after you retrieve the fifth crystal. Okie dokie, boss. Now we're going to the pits.
Let's go. I have not played Crash 2 in quite some time. And I do prefer Crash 3. I forgot. I see you there, Birdie. I was going to do something interesting here. If I can. Oh, okay. I thought I heard somewhere that, that if you watch it, it won't detonate those uh, crates. I might be in the wrong place, or there might not have been the right TNT, or I might just be hearing things, but I need to satisfy my own curiosity while I was here. Golden Aku Aku. Now, you never have noticed the path just split. And how do I know which way to go? Well, one way will actually get me the, jet, the crystal, but I'll need to go down both routes to break every crate, so... I'm going to take the routes I'm choosing at the moment. I didn't expect to bounce on that enemy, and am I out of... No, I'm not out of bounds. So that switch crate activated some outline crates somewhere. Oh, and here's the crystal, actually. So it's by air, actually. What am I trying to say? Here's the crystal, by the way, it's down the left-hand path. That was what I was trying to say. My English is not working today. Oh, right, now be careful. Now, you may have heard a little popping noise there. That was outline crates forming. I don't know where they were. All I know is that there were some. At least two turtles need to be tackled with different attacks. I believe that was all of the crates down this route. If I'm wrong, I'll pay for it later, but for now... Another checkpoint crate. And cheat my way past that pit. Aha! Now this type of crate. This is interesting. This crate will not be destroyed by standard attacks. This was a reinforced crate and can only be destroyed with a body slam. And interestingly, depending on which version of the game you have, uh, PAL, which is for Europe, or NTSC, which is America and Japan, the body slam will actually go through a certain number of layers of reinforced crates before breaking. How not to play Crash Bandicoot, lesson one. <laughs> lesson lesson one, never completely misjudge how far you're supposed to be jumping. Come on, there we are. Okay, I was trying to be smart and do the TNT bounce, but if you spin at the right moment, and I don't seem to have the knack for it, you can destroy a TNT crate uh, with a spin, which means you won't have to wait for the three second countdown. I'll try and do it again on the single one, because, you know, I didn't actually land on it that time, which is why I died. One last try. If I die this time, I'll forget about TNT bouncing. If I don't, I promise to abuse it as much as everything else in this game. I'm having a lot of trouble getting that um, bounce crate. There we go. So I won't do it with this one because I fail horribly. Goodbye. Slide your way through these two. And keep going on your merry way. Well... Nearly got them all. There we are. So, switch crate, which activates not only this one, but there were a couple earlier, which is why I left these crates alive. And now I might be in trouble. Ah, 
Okay, right, I've got a different method of doing this now. I will get this done. I've already bothered going down both paths. Hold on, what am I doing? I can just do this. Uh, okay, no more being funny with TNT. It's not working in my favour, and I'm rapidly running out of lives. He says, when he still has a clear 15 left. Oh, for crying out loud. There we are. Use Crash's Shadow. That's one of the best tips I can give you. It gives you an accurate representation of where he actually is. Extra life. By the way, these lives don't count unless I beat the level. Oh, crash! Seriously! I will do this. I promise that this first video will not be 20 minutes long. Short, uh, uh, word I'm looking for. Soul leads you to level 4. I'm hanging around just to make sure that this crate actually detonates. And why can't I break all of these crates at once? Extra life that won't count because it won't be counted up. There we go. Now hopefully I can go make it across both of those. While it's down to get a little bit of extra height. And... And I'm home free. Right, that only took far, far, far longer than it should have. But I've got the... Just to save a bit of time, I'm going to uh, slightly cheese my way over these pits, because you know what they do. They just waste your time. And I got the gem, so this wasn't a complete waste of a level. Crash is going to do his little victory dance, which I can interrupt by pushing buttons. Uh, crash dash, level 5. And this is one of those wonderful old levels Crash is famous for, where I run downwards. Those mines don't hurt, but they slow you down. So, they'll hurt in the end. Keep running, here comes the next one. Avoid the mines just out of... See, that can happen. Avoid the mines because rubbish like that can happen. And if you don't, it's going to slow you down, and then you're boulder bait. Oh, and the electric fences will kill you. So there's those too. Straight into the checkpoint crate. So here's the issue, to get the gem I need to be dodging this boulder and keeping my eyes peeled for the crates. Although the boulder can actually crush the crates for me, which is nice. Except for, I don't think they can crush reinforced crates. They can crush nitro though. Just be careful of the blast radius of those things. That crate will hurt. Stay away from that crate. Ah, that old trick. They make you do that in one of the first levels in uh, Crash 1. Let's not be stupid. Let's do the bonus level normally. Right, that should read 5 when they explode. Why did it not read 5? Of course it didn't. 
See what I mean? That should have detonated by rights. Okay, let's do it through this rubbish right here. I'm going to do this slowly so that that sort of rubbish doesn't catch me off guard. Keep your eye on whichever crate animates, because that's the one you're watching out for. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we go. Bonus area done. Well, that's just introduced you to the speeding panels, which, uh... Pretty useful for oh lord uh, for evading the gigantic boulder of terror. A pit and an electric fence. Listen for the sound. If you hear the buzzing, it means it's an electric fence. Oh yeah, I forgot. He won't actually break those because the electric fence launches the boulder. He won't actually smash those crates for you. And there we are now. How many crates did I miss? Oh, I didn't! Okay, I literally thought I'd miss some. Well, that makes five crystals. A number of coloured gems and one... Sorry, a number of clear gems and one coloured gem. The blue one. Crash is going to do his little victory dance because I picked up a gem. And the projector. Listen up. We are not without enemies. Some of them you may even recognise. Although they cannot harm you inside this warp room. They can attack you on your way to the next one. To get to the next warp room, use the platform that appears in the center of the room. Good luck. Okay, so this platform in the middle. Going up. The first boss battle, who guards the second warp room. And you might remember him from the first game, though he has a different attack pattern. This is Ripper Room. Oh dear, he's angry. We ruined his reading time. And, uh, well, this is the world's safest TNT. Just uh, don't be nearby when it decides to explode. Now, you see that he's now wearing his... I hesitate to say blonde, but... His more crazy person outfit. Straight jacket and all. Now, once he's done this with the nitro, the nitro is dangerous to stand on. Spin him. That's how you damage him, after the nitro attack. The TNT is harmless except for when it explodes. The nitro is harmless is harmful always, and I have no idea where you're going. Okay, right. They'll always leave he'll always leave a safe spot. And then you just attack him. And last hit will be after he does this nitro pattern. Oh wait. Please notice I do not have an Aku Aku protecting me. If he hits me once, I'm restarting. And we get the little crash dance to signify that's a boss. This is the second warp room, level 6 through 10. But, uh, it's the projector again. <laughs> oh, 
I see that Ripper Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But back to business. There are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. Dash, is that you? I've been looking everywhere. I don't have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise. Okay, crazy people who are talking to me. Uh, it's the cutest polar bear I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, that's where I'm going to call this episode done, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Spark249. Have fun!